mimi ningewa motivate usiogope mm-hmm. ku apply mm-hmm. don't like don't be afraid like you want to make it in europe or you're scared about uh, the knowledge you have in africa cannot be transferable here mm-hmm. so that's that's a lie you can do it mm-hmm. i myself um, i came here and i believe that everything is possible if you are committed and you pray you are going to make it so don't don't shy from applying for any position and keep on um, making those applications and you will be successful allow me to take you through three simple steps of letting your money work for you wherever you are in the world number one buy land in nanyuki two put up a cabin three let it out the beauty about it is that with as low as three million kenya shillings allied properties will do all that for you engage us for more Hi guys, welcome to our YouTube channel, The Rajore Clan. So if you're new here, we relocated with our family to Germany last year and you've been educating people how they can also relocate to Germany. So today we are interviewing one of the engineering managers who used to work at Microsoft and used to be in Kenya and he was relocated to Germany last year as a Microsoft, as a, yeah, as an engineering manager. He's also hiring, he wants people in his team and he'll be, he's been interviewing people to get to his team. So today we are interviewing him and he's telling us all about how he got to Germany, how he's recruiting people, how he's recruiting people from all over the world. You don't have to be a Kenya, even though he's Kenya, you can be relocated as long as you qualify for that job. So guys, today is the day to be here tuned, you know. He will give us all the insights, what you should do in your cover letter, what you should do as, so that you can get yourself here as well. So we are making milestone each and every day. So if you're a new subscriber, you're in the right channel and welcome to our YouTube channel, The Rajore Clan. So thank you for coming to our channel. If you can introduce yourself, we've already given you a little introduction, but tell us about yourself to Ambie how, what's your name, where you're from, so that you can get familiarized with, with you as a person. Yeah. Hi, I'm Samuel. Mm-hmm. I am from Kenya. Mm-hmm. I studied in Kenya my entire life, um, from primary to secondary, even university. Nice. I graduated from Kenya University mm-hmm. in 2016. With what degree? Yeah, already. I did uh, computer science. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was in 2016. Wow. Yeah. And where did you start your career after campus? Where did you kind of start your internship? So after campus, I started uh, working at a local start- startup, mm-hmm. which was dealing with the software engineering thing. Nice. And it was called CollabMed. I was there for like uh, four, three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was mainly starting my career as oh. a software engineer. Then after mm-hmm. that, I moved to IM Bank, where oh. I was also a software engineer. Mm-hmm. And then later on, I moved to Safaricom, where I was an engineering manager for the m team. Wow, for how long were you in Safaricom? Uh, I took like um, less than nine mm-hmm. months. It awesome. was nine months. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So less than nine months in Safaricom. So what made you move from Safaricom to the company that you are in here in Germany? So uh, I got a very interesting opportunity in Germany mm-hmm. and that's why I left my beautiful job in Kenya <laughs> to come and uh, try like new opportunities abroad. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, ah, you've told us about your journey, how you kind of went to the university, graduated and started your internship for three years and climbed the ladder. So can I tell? Can you tell us how you got the first job, and then when you how you went to I and then Safaricom, then here? So how did you go about getting jobs after campus? So after campus, I think um, I used to apply a lot to local companies, and I wasn't very picky about mm-hmm. the company I chose. Mm-hmm. And my first job was basically like an internship for mm-hmm. three months. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of that period, they decided to confirm it as permanent employment for me. So where did you actually apply? So the site that I used was mm-hmm. Brighter Monday, nice. which mm-hmm. is very popular in Kenya. So I did several applications mm-hmm. there, and then I was successful to get the internship awesome. uh, at Colab. So after that, how did you get the job of I&M? So 
uh, I just kept on applying to jobs like which were interesting to me. I, I knew where my level was and where I wanted to be. Still at Brighter Monday? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I that time Brighter Monday was, was really, really so popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's where, how I found the job at and, uh, and then Bank, mm -hmm. a software engineer. And how did you get the job now at Safaricom? So I used, they have a career page, Safaricom mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. like a career page for internships, mm -hmm. for professionals. So I used, uh, I created a profile there and applied to one of their open positions. Nice. Yeah. So you hear guys, there's, Safaricom has a platform where they get, you can apply for internship, for jobs. So we'll also put that in the description below so that you can check what opportunity Safaricom has. So apart from now you've gotten Safaricom, now you went to now this job that you're at Babola in Germany. So tell us your process, how you kind of got here in Germany, the juice, what people want to know exactly. Yeah, it was very interesting. Mm -hmm. I was active on LinkedIn. And Shout that again, please. I was active on LinkedIn. Thank you very much. What was LinkedIn? <laughs> Oi, LinkedIn gang? Oi. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so there are so many job opportunities. You can search with the location and even subscribe to alerts, yes. and that's what I did. So I was actively looking for job opportunities in Germany and also in Canada mm -hmm. and also um, in the United States. So how many jobs did you apply? Because I'm sure you didn't apply the first job and you got. How many jobs were you applying per day for you to even get recruiters to come to you? So how are you going through the process? Yeah, so mm -hmm. I did a number of applications. Of mm -hmm. course, you might not get it on the very first attempt True. but i kept on applying for i think i did like between 50 to 80 applications which is very Are they? <laughs> no overall mm -hmm. yeah, overall okay yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but um i just updated my profile like shared all my skills there mm -hmm. and had a nice profile so that was the very starting point of like making a professional um, outlook of yourself mm -hmm. and also the statement what you want to achieve and what you can improve in other things as well. Exactly what I tell people. When you want to apply, when you have a port profile, you have to kind of state your experience. You have to state what you're interested in, what, you, what you're open to, and recruiters will kind of notice your profile. Like the way someone is telling us. You'll also go and look at his LinkedIn profile and you will kind of see how it's stated and how people can really notify, you not get notified and also recruiters can get notified that your profile has been updated. So I'm thankful that Samuel is a living testimony that LinkedIn is getting people jobs. Yeah. Just start and learn your thought process. Yeah, in some situations, mm -hmm. recruiters reach out to people directly on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and they ask you about interest in particular opportunities and that has happened to me as well for mm -hmm. more than three occasions. Wow. Yeah. So how many recruiters have come to your profile and why didn't you accept those opportunities and you only accepted the opportunities that you have now? So you have to evaluate every opportunity that comes along. So you go and check the company, like mm -hmm. what um, their interests are mm -hmm. and what um, terms you have for growth, for example. Mm -hmm. And then some of them you might try to apply and then um, also they still have to evaluate you as well. Apart from what you have displayed on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. you still have to go through interview process and that's something that uh, you need to have in mind as well. Interesting. When these recruiters come to your to your inbox, what exactly, what have you noticed about their messaging? What is familiar with every message they tell you? Do you see a pattern that there's something that you've done to a profile for these recruiters to notify you every time there's an opportunity? So there's a feature on LinkedIn where you can say you are available for work, for example, mm -hmm. and then you can list like um, what kind of opportunities you are looking for um, and which kind of job titles you are open to and I think recruiters can see that and they might be interested in to, to view your profile and send you a message. Ah uh, yeah that feature that feature is called open to work. And you know it's not a must for you to put the green uh, is it ribbon to say that yeah, you're open yeah, to work. Yeah. There's open to work to recruiters. And yeah. I've told you this before when I've talked about LinkedIn, how you can make your LinkedIn top notch, that you can be open to work for only recruiters so that your recent boss doesn't know you're open to work to other people. You know, it's very wrong and it's very, like, not trustworthy when your employer sees that you're open to work and, and it's kind of shown on your profile. So make sure you're only open to work to recruiters. 
So after you got that email from that particular recruiter that you the job that you are right now. So how was the process? What was the first step that you took with the recruiter? So they are different. Uh, I think it's different for every company. Mm -hmm. or they have different recruitment processes. Mm -hmm. But the first thing was just to get on to a call with the recruiter and mm -hmm. to understand, to explain the position, mm -hmm. and also to have a glimpse about you to mm -hmm. understand what you are looking for. And mm -hmm. if you have initial questions, you can ask them. And if you for example, are interested to know how the recruitment process will look like, mm -hmm. if there are benefits maybe to relocation that will be possible for you. So mm -hmm. that is always assessed in the first call, and that's the starting point. So what got you to go to the next step when you had all these things from the recruiter? So what was the, the, like the icing of the, of, the, of the role that made you feel like, okay, we can go to the next process? So... I thought that um, I had a very good conversation with the recruiter and it was very exciting about the company was nice and also I had did some background search for the company mm -hmm. and I realized that it should be something that um, will be interesting and mm -hmm. also help me grow in my career as well. So that's what uh, piqued my mind mm -hmm. and I was so motivated to continue that process. So when you looked at the job description, did the do job description or the benefits, did they say that they offer a location? So the recruiter usually has information about the recruitment process and also the location benefits they provide. Mm -hmm. So it's usually very, uh, on the first call you have with them, you mm -hmm. can ask them this question. Mm -hmm. And some companies, they also indicate in the job description in yeah. the advert that mm -hmm. they are also welcome to provide support for those who will be relocating. Mm -hmm. yeah. And did they say that they will relocate with your family? So relocation, mm -hmm. mostly mm -hmm. most companies usually consider the whole family mm -hmm. because uh, they don't want to separate you from your loved one. Yeah. But it's always uh, okay to check with the recruiter about that. Huh? Interesting. Yeah. So after now talking to the recruiter, how long was the interview process? How many interviews do you take to kind of get the offer? So that would And what was the role, by the way? So, mm -hmm. so the role uh, was an engineering manager position. Mm -hmm. And that means I had like um, about three interviews. Mm -hmm. And the first interview, I had to speak to like the hiring manager who was basically the director mm -hmm. of engineering. Mm -hmm. And he has some questions that are related to like ways of working mm -hmm. and also leadership questions and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. And the next question, I the next interview I had was with the product team mm -hmm. because um, in engineering management, you work closely with the product team and also they want to understand your approach towards uh, mm -hmm. solving product related um situations mm -hmm. or problems. Mm -hmm. And then my last interview I had with uh, an engineering focused group mm -hmm. who would basically be um, other engineering managers mm -hmm. from other clusters mm -hmm. and that also uh, they would ask questions related to engineering as well. And this role is engineering manager. Yeah. So how confident were you that you a Kenyan from Africa will get this job. You know, you're, it's an English-speaking job, right? Yes, yes, yes. So you're competing with people in UK, you're competing with people in Canada, you're competing with Nigerians, you're competing with Indians. So what gave you the confidence that you might pass this interview and get to relocate? Yeah, I didn't have much confidence mm -hmm. at the beginning, but after my first conversation with the recruiter mm -hmm. and then the follow-up interviews, uh, mm -hmm. I saw that uh, it is something that I can be able to um, try mm -hmm. and and keep on pushing mm -hmm. and I wasn't uh, very sure I'll get it mm -hmm. but uh, I gave it all I can. So you that role if mm -hmm. I can elaborate again mm -hmm. you didn't have to know German did you? So I didn't have to know German mm -hmm. yeah. So you just the the role was advertised in English yes. you sent your CV in English yeah. you were interviewed in English yeah. You are in a company that is diverse. Yeah. Interesting. And now, and that company, tell us what that company deals with, the bubble company. 
So uh, at Babel, mm -hmm. we build a product that help people learn languages. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe you moved to a new country, maybe you got a new job in a different language and you want to improve your language learning skill. Mm -hmm. So we build an application that would enable you to learn um, on a self-paced and also there are some uh, live classes with other learners and nice. you can have um, interact with other people and try like your language skills with them. Yeah. So our corporate language is English because mm -hmm. uh, it's a very diverse company. There are over 75 nationalities represented. Nice. And that was very interesting to me at mm -hmm. the beginning because I would then um, meet so many people from very different cultures and backgrounds. It's interesting how Babel is, uh, it's Babel, not Babel. Babel is, Babel. A, Babel is a company like Duolingo. Yeah. And they're teaching people different languages and they don't really need you to know another language for you to work with them. Yeah. You just have to know the English language and in the process you learn the other languages and also help others learn different languages. So apart from Duolingo, there's someone who works with a company that's called Babel. And Babel not only gives you, like Duolingo, not just studying, you can also have live classes with other people and get to interact and get on-site uh, classes. Like people have been asking me, ah, which language, where can I study, where can I study? Here is your guy telling us there's another application that you can learn and also learn with others. So apart from Duolingo, we have Babel. So after the interviews, mm -hmm. how long did it take for you to get the offer? So mm -hmm. that depends uh, with the company, but for my case, mm -hmm. it took like uh, just three days to get the offer. Nice. Yeah, so and, they came mm -hmm. with the decision and mm -hmm. gave me the offer. Ah, oh, nice. So yeah. how did you, what, what are the documents they needed to kind of now start the visa process? And did they support you with the visa processing? Uh, so they just needed like my passport for, so that they can draft my offer, for example, mm -hmm, and yeah. fill in those information. Mm -hmm. um, but for the visa process, I needed like m my university degree mm -hmm. um, and uh, also I had to fill in some forms. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, also, the job offer, you mm -hmm. need to have it when you go for the visa appointment. Mm -hmm. um, and also some common documents like mm -hmm. birth certificate or something. But those were the only documents that were required for my case. So, did you certify your your university degree? No, I just submitted it as a teacher. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, that's nice. So you just gave in your whatever your documents that you have. You didn't have to go to Sharia House to certify anything. No, you I didn't did go to have to go to the university to certify. No. Did they ask for your medical report or something? No, I did not. That's a good thing yeah. with IT. Yeah. You just submit your documents, and if they see they are okay, but there's something they need to know, like if your documents are certified. So they didn't want to know if your university is certified or not. No, I think mm -hmm. it might depend on the embassy, but yes. for me, mm -hmm. I just submitted my degree as it is, and mm -hmm. that was it. Also, oh, the embassy didn't ask for any certification no, document. No. Oh, that is nice. And did they fast track your visa, or did, how did you get the appointment? Because I know getting an appointment at the embassy is really tight. So how did you go about it? So uh, for for my case, yeah. the company was involved in this process called fast track application. Yes. And they help you like get appointment very quickly. Like mm -hmm. within one month, you get an appointment. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's that's what happens when you are in IT. That's a good thing when they fast track it. So they just write an email to show that they, you need that document and it should be fast track. Yeah. So the only thing they need to send is an email, right? Yes. Awesome. Perfect. And there is no medical for people of IT because you're not going to treat any patients. You're not going to interact with other people who are in different medical degrees or anything. So mm. for IT, you just need to, your documents. If your documents are okay and you have the offer and you're good at what you do, you'll be given the offer, you'll get the appointment and you'll be able to relocate. It's as simple as that, guys. So someone is a living testimony and we're here to tell you guys that it's possible to relocate. So how, what's your day-to-day -day job? Like you said, you're a manager and I've seen your LinkedIn, you're hiring. So Tupekazi, talk to our people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my day-to-day -day job is to manage a um, very high performance engineering team mm -hmm. and uh, 
in different times we have open positions that I need to fill, for example. Mm -hmm. Even right now we have so many open positions yeah. for our team. Good. And funny thing, we usually have many people applying from India, mm -hmm. Pakistan and other countries, mm -hmm. but we have very few Kenyans who applied for this position. Very few Kenyans. Yeah. Wa Kenya. Hata ni ungina nini. Very few Kenyans and the Rajuri clan is telling you people to apply. Mbaka ni mwaletia another hiring manager. You guys mna niangusha bana. Mbaka na unge kiswaili. Ghana nzo wana niambia ni unge na English. Tanzania nzo wana niambia ni unge na English. Tanzania nzo wana na English. Mdi wasikia. Mimi na unge kiswaili ndio ni wapate. Kumbe yo very few are applying. Shuali. Okoto. Ya wa. Konya. Kenyans. Haya. Mimi sita unge atena. Continue. Yeah. Very few Kenyans. Not that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and especially in the field of IT, it's wow. very easy to like get a job. Exactly. And when you we, when you apply for these jobs, mm -hmm. we just evaluate your profile, your CVs, and we don't even look at your education at that time. Thank you very much. Whether you did a separate field and you know how you are, you have technical skills, mm -hmm. you can still apply for these positions if you have those technical experience exactly. as well. So mm -hmm. it's very easy. You just apply and then the interview process is simple. Mm -hmm. We You just speak with uh, a few engineers and I think maximum of three interviews and then that's mm -hmm. the process. Very good. If mm -hmm. you are successful, um, the company will come in to support you in the process to relocate. Awesome. Everyone's situation is different. True. Some people have families, mm -hmm. some people have kids, and their process might be different. Mm -hmm. But there is extensive relocation support for everyone who is successful. Extensive, Angoa? Extensive. Sawa, extensive support, regardless of where you are in the world. So, yeah. So, what can you tell someone who wants to locate for a job either in Germany or anywhere in the world? What advice can you tell someone? So um, just uh, be confident and apply for any position you find that suits you. You don't have to worry about um, the company or other people. You just need to be confident. Mimi ningewa motivate. Si yogope ku apply. Don't like. Don't be afraid. Like you want to make it in Europe or you're scared about. Uh, the knowledge you have in Africa cannot be transferable here. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a lie. You can do it. Mm -hmm. I myself, um, I came here and I believe that everything is possible. If you are committed and you pray, you are going to make it. So don't, don't shy from applying for any position and uh, keep on um, making those applications and you will be successful. And how are you finding it? How can you advise someone that when they come here, Will they be able to kind of survive? Will they be able to? Because people are usually afraid to come to a new country. So apart from getting the job, how can you advise them on how to kind of survive here in Germany? Yeah, so relocating can be very intimidating at the very beginning. Yeah. But uh, it's also an interesting and um, encounter in your life, like changing to different perspectives, meeting people in different areas. Yeah also meeting new challenges and so many good things. Mm -hmm. So I believe that it's something that you should not be very scared of, mm -hmm. but um, just think of it as an adventure and then it's going to turn out interesting. Yeah, talking of an adventure in Europe, when you're in Europe, you can travel in, to Spain, you can travel to Greece, you can, and affairs are very cheap, like how many, euro, 20, 10 euros and you, you get a flight, you know? to yeah. go to a different country. So at the end of the day, you always explore and be able to get an opportunity to go to different countries at the same time. It's like in Germany, you can go to, let's say, France, and it's like going to Nakuru, you know. <laughs> it's funny how it's simple and easy, you know. Yeah, I just had to say, like, even in the last four months, I've been to six countries in Europe. Yeah, 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 nice. Uh, very mm -hmm. recently, Czech Republic, nice. Finland, and it's not even very expensive. Exactly. It's really easy to move around and no mm -hmm. visa restrictions, things like that. As long so, as you have the EU blue card. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be very, uh, if you like traveling, if you like exploring new things, yes. then this is your opportunity. Awesome. Thank you. So thank you so much, of course, for giving us your story, educating us and telling us the experience that you had. It's not every day you get people to come and speak to your channel and want to motivate other people. So we thank you so much. 
for motivating our, our, our subscribers and motivating the people who will be watching this video to tell them that it's possible. From wherever you are in the world, it's possible. And of course, putting God first, that is one thing. Because at the end of the day, you can't do it without God, our Lord, you know. So thank you so much and be blessed. Thank you very much. Awesome. So guys, I'm hoping you've gotten all the notes. You've really been watching and listening tip by tip from this guy called Okot. And I'm hoping you guys, you'll be able to relocate as well. If you have been taking notes, if you have been seeing our videos of how to ace the interviews, how to use, do your cover letter, how to make your LinkedIn top notch, I'm sure this interview has really given you more insights. So if you want to see more of this, stay tuned, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend, share the good news that you are educating people one by one. I got an inbox, someone telling me they have also gotten an offer. I'll share the screenshot here. It's really nice to see people that have been watching my channel, like getting, getting inspired and also getting jobs. So guys, I'm so happy for you if you've been here. And this is the Rajori clan. We educate people how to relocate. And guys, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for liking, for commenting, for always being on this channel. And if you're a first time subscriber, you're in the right channel. Until next video, until next time, adios guys. And thank you for staying tuned. Bye.